So last week I was here and I said, forget the emails guys, forget the DMs. Can we just talk about everything via videos? One of the most popular topics that came up was fibroid degeneration. Yeah. I'm gonna explain what exactly it is, how it affected my pregnancy, my delivery, and those tough 10 months. It was the scariest experience of my life. The most pain I've ever been through. I'll tell you how it all started. I was in my second trimester, about 15 weeks, I think. And it was a Friday. I just made some really peppery pasta. So in the evening, I had like these, what felt like really strong period pains. So I was thinking, ah, Maria, you've put too much pepper in your food. You've caused yourself a problem. Don't you know you're carrying a baby? What are you doing? I remember at night I was screaming, oh, my uterus, my uterus. And my mom and my sister were laughing, thinking that I was just being dramatic because apparently I'm dramatic, I'm dramatic, I'm dramatic. I woke up Saturday morning and the pains were worse. They were coming in like waves, like little tiny earthquakes erupting in my stomach. So I'm pregnant, so I'm very scared. I'm thinking, why do I have what feels like period pains? So I called the emergency number 111. They said, we're not sure what it is, but since you're carrying a baby, go straight to hospital. They did some scans, they did an internal examination. I hate internal examinations, ladies, that you hate them, I hate them. Um, they couldn't find anything. They said maybe it's just growing pains. I mean, you're growing a baby, you can't expect to go pain-free for nine, 10 months. I said, okay, no problem. So I came home. The decision to come back home, I always look back at that and thinking, Maria, that was the worst mistake you made. Sunday, about two o'clock in the morning, I was screaming at the top of my lungs. My face was drowned in tears. I was crying. My mum ran downstairs. I actually thought I was having the baby. I thought I was in labour. Let me tell you, yeah. Well, before I had the baby, that was the worst pain I'd ever been through. So my stomach seized up maybe for like 10 seconds and it'll just be pulsate, pulsating, boom, 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 boom. Like someone was knocking my stomach around. It would let go and come back and let go. And I was sitting there on Google thinking, ah, this is what contractions sound like. My mum called the ambulance and the ambulance came. And I was on gas, gas in there. I don't even want to say it because, you know, it's very emotional, but ambulance team thought I was having a miscarriage. Whew. There was something that I was thinking, you know, there's this like saying that you don't know how much you want something or how bad you want, how badly you want something until it's almost ripped from right under you, until it's almost taken away from you. Before I was just like, oh, I'm pregnant, it's unplanned. Oh, woe is me, feeling sorry for myself. And then when I felt I was so close to losing her, well, we didn't know it was a girl at the time. I, I'd never wanted anything so bad, so badly in my life. I, it was just, it was a very emotional time. Finally got to the hospital. I was in mad pain, screaming, rolling around like a worm. I couldn't, I was just wriggling. I couldn't stay in one place. I was screaming. I said, look, am I having the baby? They had to give me morphine, which is dangerous because medication, especially morphine, is not good for the baby. But that's how much pain I was in. It knocked me out. Woke up 30 minutes later because the pain was so mad. The morphine couldn't keep it down. I said, look, whatever's happening to me, cool i need to see my baby show me my baby i need to see that baby i did some scans i heard the doctor muttering to i think a nurse or his assistant and then he came back to me my mom my dad my sister the whole family was there and they said you have a fibroid i said no i don't they said yes you do i said i don't they said how can you not know you have a fibroid maria it's like nine centimeters it's huge like it's huge I said, you guys must be on something. I don't have no fibroids. Like, I remember my periods were quite heavy as I got older. I remember the last two, three years, they were heavier, they were longer, they were painful, but manageable with some painkillers. The doctor said you should have been having heavy periods. You should have been showing symptoms of having a fibroid. I said, no, I don't have no fibroid. The doctor showed me a huge, like, besides maybe one and a half oranges, it was just scary and horrible to look at. They did a scan and it's just so symbolic. I tell you, I believe in God. I saw her swimming around, like literally doing somersaults. The girl was just swimming. She was tiny, swimming, swimming, swimming in the amniotic sac, amniotic fluid. And then my heart just rested. I was still in crazy pain, but my heart just rested. They did some tests, came back and the doctor said, you have fibroid degeneration. I looked at him and I said, okay, I just found out I had a fibroid. I'm not ashamed to say, I still didn't really understand the ins and outs of fibroids. They now came to add degeneration onto it. So I said, you need to explain to me what fibroid degeneration is, please. 
Fibroid degeneration, what I understand it to be, is when a fibroid grows so huge, too huge, that it outgrows its food supply. It was being fed blood and oxygen from my body, but now there's a baby that needs this blood and oxygen as well. The baby's sucking the food the fibroid's supposed to be taking, so the fibroid can't survive anymore, so it begins to die or try to die, and that was where the crazy pain came from. If I wasn't pregnant, I probably wouldn't even have known I had a fibroid yet, or maybe ever, I don't know. I would definitely wouldn't have had that crazy pain. So to cut a long story short, doctors said, if we take the fibroid out, you're on a high risk of losing your baby. If we keep your baby in your womb, you're gonna have to deal with this crazy pain because we can't give you medicine. If we give you medicine, there's a high risk it's gonna affect the baby, hurt the baby, or kill the baby. For me, there was no question I don't care what pain I go through, leave the fibroid and see my baby right through to the nine month, 10 month mark. I don't care what I have to go through. So I ended up staying in hospital for seven days. Yeah. I was given uh, painkillers like paracetamol, but I mean, I can't lie, I didn't do anything. I could hardly eat. First of all, I was worried. A do different doctor would come in every morning and explain the situation. I got an ultrasound every single day I was at hospital. They were worried because of the location of the fibroid. It was just outside my womb. It grew bigger if it moved or if it dropped it could affect the baby so i was on close monitoring so at that moment my pregnancy became a high risk pregnancy they said you're gonna have to have an appointment with the doctor every two weeks you're gonna have to have an ultrasound every month you need to go home and be on bed rest you can't do anything strenuous and that's when i realized carrying this baby was really 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 real i remember one time i was on the floor rolling around just clutching my stomach i think this was second day of the hospital visit i want to thank my parents and my sister my friends as well my mom she stayed there as late as she could she tried to sneak in and stay overnight sometimes i wake up in the morning and see my dad's face my sister's face i woke up sometimes seeing my friends sometimes the doctors will come in in the morning just look at you this like somber look and i'm like do you have something bad you want to say to me it was just really really scary well, what some of you might be thinking is, okay, that was a short, acute time. Uh, it was seven days. We know your daughter's here. She's healthy. She's fine. It, it, it wasn't like that for the 10 months of pregnancy. I had to have appointments at my local health centre, appointments with my GP, appointments with the hospital. I was seeing the doctor every one to two weeks. I had planned to do a lot of malice cosmetic stuff at the time. I had to put everything on hold. I thought I'd be able to fly in and out of Lagos, which is where I was working full time, I couldn't. So I had to put that on hold. You know, a lot of people with their assumptions, I don't blame you because you're fed things about me that aren't true. Um, you assume that, you know, I found out I was pregnant, I just jumped ship and ran away to London. The doctor said, if you're serious about having this child, you need to stay right here. And we need to monitor you until this child literally comes out. Because aside from the fact that the growing fibroid could affect the growth of my baby during delivery there's a possibility of overbleeding, possibly bleeding to death all these things because they're not able to take the fibroid out so they're trying to manage the fibroid growth and my baby's growth at the same time bearing in mind the first time i've ever had a child so i'm supposed to be happy of course very very happy but then they've also got medical issues it was really really tough and i sometimes think I'm selfish because it's tough for me but imagine the people around you I imagine how much I cared about my daughter I hadn't even met her I'm watching my daughter worried for her my mom's watching me worried for me and her granddaughter glory to god we're happy um by the last month month 10 I saw the doctor every single week eventually she came a few hours after her what do you call it due date and I had to have an injection to make sure I wouldn't overbleed just the fibroid. But the fibroid said the same. I think it went down one centimeter. So it went down from nine centimeters to eight centimeters. It stayed eight centimeters for the whole pregnancy. After I had her, which was the happiest moment of my life, I had a short conversation with doctors. They were like, you know, yeah, baby's here, woo, okay. But the fibroid is no longer our issue. Uh, if you want to take the, fi take the fibroid out, discuss that with the GP. The advice taking out fibroids is if it affects fertility or if it overly affects your health. But they said you're still having periods. The periods are manageable with painkillers. You're able, you're fertile, you're able to carry a baby, you're able to deliver a baby. So don't take out the fibroid because that can lead to further complications. Um, so right now the fibroid's inside. 
Um, I need to go for a checkup soon though, I haven't had it. Until I saw her, until she came out of me, I wasn't able to sleep properly because I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, at Maria Okan. There was a time when um, some silly stories were fed about me on uh, social media about my daughter and I. And a lot of people were saying, you know, why aren't you saying anything? Why are you quiet? Why are you not speaking? Why are you not clapping back? Why are you not putting out your side of the story? Now you understand. Very emotional, very, already very stressed, already just trying to get to the other side of this ordeal that you and your unborn child are going through. What do I look like? At that point in my life, the most important thing to me was my unborn child and this very day the most important thing to me is my child so i didn't have time to start sitting there and talking about stuff so there you go people are like oh you're made of steel or how come or you're guilty or why didn't you why didn't you respond no i'm sorry i was going through a lot lastly i did have a few ladies ask me about some specifics uh via my dm i won't get too detailed because that's your personal experience of course they were trying to get pregnant and they had uh, fibroids as well or dealing with fibroid issues I'm a living testimony I didn't even know I had a fibroid I had a big one and I had degeneration and I still had a baby I just think the smartest thing to do is to make sure you see your doctor or go to a hospital and stay on it if the doctors weren't on my neck I don't know how this all would have turned out they watched this fibroid to the end or to the end of my pregnancy let's take anything for granted and just because you have a fibroid does not mean um, you can't have a child there's always hope, ladies.